convert into oxide correct so if you look at the example i have given in calcination we have mainly a uh, hydroxide and carbonates over there metals hydro metals of hydrox hydroxide metals we have sorry metal hydroxides we have we have hydrated metal oxide we have and we have carbonates present right so these uh, compounds if you look at the reaction it can easily convert it into oxide correct you don't have to put much effort into it just you need to heat it in absence of air you will get oxide easily but suppose if you have sulfide like hgs in this that the one that that given hgs you have zns you have pbs you have okay so all these sulfides you need to convert it into oxide right but oxygen is not there we have lead sulfide zinc sulfide so you have to supply oxygen from outside so that metal converts into oxides right so, so it's basically depends upon the property of the uh, you know metal impurities that we have or metal compounds which is present there in the mixture if it is hydroxides carbonates and hydrated form you heat it simply it will convert it into oxide but if it if it, if it is not in the form of carbonate hydroxides and hyd and hydrates of metal oxides then you have to provide oxygen from outside and then heat it so that it converts into oxides yes sir yeah? okay so and why do only metals like more reactive metals like uh, calcium aluminum and all only form the carbonates and all not zinc copper see in, in this we we do not have you know any uh, logic on this because you see when we discuss about the extraction of any metals no we are just giving you a overview of what process we use but in this process we add certain compounds also for the purification process correct so it totally depends like what compound you are getting in a process it totally depends upon what process you are following in the previous step depending upon that you will have some chemical reaction and then you will get the product okay so okay. for calcium uh, it's you know it's it's very you know i cannot give you even no one can give you the concrete answer on this because you see the metals present in the earth crust as the you know as the compound in that what all impurities are there that is one case what you are adding from outside for the extraction of metal that is another condition in all these conditions you will have one product in the reaction right so it can be anything so for calcium you know iron mostly we see we forms hydroxides or carbonates because in the earth crust we have those compounds present plus condition of reaction is like that so that it converts into carbonates and all if condition is different maybe you'll get calcium oxides also directly that is also possible so there is no any concrete answer for this could be anything okay yes yeah so this is what we have gross state correct now what we get till now we get metal oxides our purpose is to extract metal eventually right now we have got metal oxides now if you are able to remove oxygen from these metals metal oxides you will get the metals finally correct so the last not last we have second last method and the last one is just you know purification like last step is just we will enhance the percentage of the uh, metal that you are getting to get the more pure form right so in this step the next step what we do we have metal oxides we have to remove oxygen and for that purpose we do reduction of metal oxide so in reduction process we extract oxygen from metal oxide and we get impure metal first and then the last step will increase the purity of the metal that is the last step of the reaction so in the next process you write down reduction of next process you write down reduction of roasted or calcined ore reduction is the process we have
ओके ड्रक्शन दिस प्रोसेस वी कॉल एज स्मेल्टिंग ओके आई राइट डाउन द डेफिनेशन राइट डाउन द एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ मेटल the extraction of a metal from a metal from its oxide its oxide by a process by a process involving uh by a process involves melting is called is called smelting so the roasted or calcined ore that you get it still contains non fusible impurities okay i'll just in short i'll just write down the ore that you have roasted ore right it contains infused infusible i'm sorry it is non fusible impurities non fusible impurities non fusible impurities of like you know silica uh, you know silicates or you know metallic oxides these kind of impurities are present and to remove this infusible impurity just example of infusible impurities you write down we can have silica we can have silicates metal oxides all these are infusible impurities and to remove this impurities we also add some compounds into this and these compounds are called flux flux we add to remove these impurities okay so when you add a flux so already we have impurities present in the you know a mixture which we call it as gang so gang is already there and you add some compound from the outside in this smelting process that we got as flux this combines with the gang and it forms slag which comes out from the mixture and that is how we remove impurities here right flux you add it forms slag and that comes out one second guys ha uh, ha uh. guys one second just one second
Yes. Uh, okay, so what we were discussing, uh, gang plus plus gives you slag, okay? So slag that comes out and the impurities is removed, okay? Now, what are the types of flux that we use? That is important here, right? So flux we use, we can have acidic flux, we can have basic flux, okay? Anything we can use, depending upon the nature of the gang again, the impurities which is present in the sample, right? So write down here, next. <clears throat> Acidic flux. Acidic flux, such as silica. Example, if you see, we have SiO2. It is acidic flux, borex, NO2, B407, dot 10H2. Just you need to keep some examples in mind, okay? NO2, B407, dot 10H2. These are acidic flux, okay? This is added always when the impurities are basic. Added in basic impurities. Added in basic impurities. Okay, basic impurities. <clears throat> Such as we have metallic oxides. Metallic oxides are basic. So we have, uh, you know, acidic flux, acidic flux added in basic impurities gives you fusible slag. It was non-fusible initially. Once you add this flux, it becomes fusible. Okay, look at this reaction, SiO2 plus CaO, CaO See, Venkat, we're using borax here, since it has the ability to remove most of the metallic oxides. Okay, so one logic we have that acidic flux we are using against the basic impurities, but it is based on the reaction that we have. What, you know, impurities are present, based on that we'll, we'll choose the flux here, right? So Na2B407 also serves as a flux for uh, most of the metallic oxides. That's why we have it over here. So it's basically- it oh, Come again, yeah, tell me. So it doesn't matter that borax is uh, basic. I see the structure of borax is what? We have Na2, B407, right? Yes, sir. Or uh, we have two Na plus and B407 minus we have. Yes, sir. Right. So it can take oxygen, sorry, the metallic oxides that you have, it can form a salt with the metallic oxide. Means that uh, metal oxides can replace Na from that. Means reaction is possible. Okay, it is so, basic okay. also, then reaction is possible. That's why we are using it. <clears throat> Sir, uh, which acidic character are we talking about? Because if borax is basic and we're using acidic flux, we're telling it as acidic flux. No, right? acidic flux, see, acidic flux is this. Okay, so acidic flux, see, borax, see, it's, it's not like in the solution how it is behaving. The acidic behavior, if you look at the you know, the structure of borax we have, uh, the borax structure is this. It depends upon its structure. B407 we have, no? So we have one, two, three, four, uh, five, six. And just a second, let me just check this structure. One, two, three, four. That's five BOB. Six. Seventh oxygen, where it will go? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six BOB, no? One, two, three, four, five, and six. There are two center BOBs are there, sir. I, I'm, not, I'm not, I'm doubtful of that. Mm. I'm not, not 100% sure that there's two central BOBs, sir. 
I think it's uh, four uh, sideways BOB, one center BOB, and all those on the on the other side of the boron, you'll get OH, 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 maybe. No. So, acha, one second. So we have ten H two, na? Ah, yes, sir. Oh, one second. Let me just. <clears throat> they call it and it to be four or seven we have the structure we have bob bond we have four or five bob bond into this five <clears throat> uh four uh, border bob in one bridge bob four five no so i think five, yeah it would be this like uh, this yes, like that yes sir. and we have any four we have we have seven here right so you are saying this huh? i think this is possible and then o ke sath salt correct yeah and this o n i think this is the structure we have no yes sir then is two okay this is the structure we have correct so you see <clears throat> this is salt correct so we have this and first of all it is a salt yes sir right? basic salt or acidic salt that's a different thing But since it is a salt, so it forms O minus here, O minus here. Correct, sir. Correct. Which can easily take the metal oxide. You see, if O minus O minus is present, it can take this calcium or suppose any metal oxide iron if you have over there. Correct. Okay, so point is here. Point is you are confused with since it is acidic plus. So the compound, the plus that you are using, it must be acidic. That's fine. but this compound it can show reaction with metallic oxide and it was in uh, non fusible initially when it combines with borax this o minus will take these metals which which is there in the non fusible slag and then it converts into fusible slag since the reaction is possible here that's why we are using this as an acidic flux because it shows reaction with most of the metal oxides because na is a no electropositive metal form na plus na plus and these metals will come over here and it converts into a fusible slag which comes out as a slag over there so reaction is possible compounds usually the term see terms you are using acidic flux because most of the flux are acidic in nature and okay, this okay. acid base behavior is relative right you can say this one is more basic other one is less basic that we can discuss okay overall okay. what we are doing we are considering whether the reaction with the non fusible slag is possible or not so yes it is true when you have basic uh, oxide of metal mostly we can use acidic flux like sio2 but some of the you know uh, oxides of metal also get replaced or convert into fusible slag when it reacts with borax since the structure is this na plus will get replaced by the metal ion over here that's why oh. the reaction is oh got it sir okay okay so we have um, acidic flux and the second flux we have is basic flux you write down two types of flux we use the last one is the basic flux we have just opposite it is basic flux so we'll add um into the acidic impurities which is present so basic flux such as we have uh, limestone the example of this we can have cso3 we can use for this purpose we can also use the same group carbonate mgco3 we can use for the same purpose okay this is added to remove this is added to remove to remove acidic impurities acidic impurities silica is also Uh, like uh, we have seen it is an acidic plus also present as impurities in the sample so silica is also the acidic impurities we have and when you add these flux basic flux into this it forms silicate so you have added calcium here 
So it forms CaSiO3 calcium silicate, which forms a fusible slag, comes out, and CO2 escapes into the atmosphere. Okay. So this is smelting is the process we use to remove to remove the slag, correct? Whether it is uh, to remove the impurities with the help of flux, which can either be acidic or basic, correct? Once you have this impurities you have removed is still you are left with metal oxides which will use for reduction in order to obtain metal from its oxide so last process we have here for the purification is chemical reduction write down chemical reduction chemical reduction, the last method. So basically in this, we use a various reducing agent, right? Three types of reduction method we have here. The last one is the electro refining method. I think. Mm -hmm. Electro refining method is more important. We'll discuss that, how it happens and what are the, you know, uh, cathode anode we'll take. Okay, that is important. We'll discuss what important we have into that. But other two are, you know, you already know, like chemical reduction is what? You add some reducing agent, it will extract oxygen and will get metal, correct? So you see, chemical reduction, first method is carbon as the reducing agent we use. As the reducing agent. Just few reactions, you know this already. Suppose we have lead oxide. In general, what happens? We are left with metal oxide. Metal oxide ka reduction you karado with carbon. You heat this, it forms CO monoxide and metal will get here. Forms. For example, you see, you have PBO ka reaction with carbon. Heat kar diya, it forms PB plus CO. You have Fe2O3 reduction with carbon and you heat this it converts into 2 fe plus 3 c 3 carbon we have here and like this we have the reaction with carbon apart from this we can also use carbon monoxide as a reducing agent. So PBO plus CO, PB plus CO2. Carbon monoxide as a reducing agent because all are eliminating oxygen from this. So it forms Cu plus CO2. Copy this down. Okay, <clears throat> the second method we have, which we use for reduction is, it is auto or self reduction process. Auto reduction process or self reduction process.
Okay. In this process, write down. In this process, we do not require any reducing agent. In this process, we do not require we do not require a reducing uh, agent. Uh, we use this method only for those metals which are less electropositive, sulfides of those metals which are less electropositive. So write down uh, sulfides of metals like sulfides of metals like Hg, copper, lead, sulfides of metals like mercury, copper, lead, mercury, copper, lead, tin are reduced to are reduced to metal are reduced to metal when heated in presence of air. Just you need to heat in presence of air. That is it. No other reagent is required. Sir, in? Oh, one second. In presence of air. No, sir, tin. Uh, that, uh, one second. Uh, huh, one, uh, sir, tin are reduced. Uh, I don't know what sentence I framed. I tell you what is the, what is the entire thing because I was framing the sentence. I cannot repeat the exact sentence. Okay. I was saying what the metals like uh, mercury, copper, uh, lead and tin are uh, no the sulfides of metals like mercury copper lead and tin are reduced to are reduced to metal in presence of when heated in presence of air one second trip and just a second uh, i said the sulfides of metals like mercury copper lead tin are reduced to metal when heated in presence of air, correct? Yeah, very good, done? Done, sir. Yeah, see, uh, there's a doubt, uh, carbon can be used to reduce any metal, oxides or just some. The same logic, Trippan, you can apply, electrochemistry, okay? The reduction of metal is possible if the oxidation potential of carbon is higher than to that of metal. So carbon can reduce only those metal uh, sulfides like the, for which if you compare the reduction potential of the metal should be more than to that of carbon. Or if you talk about the oxidation potential, carbon should have more oxidation potential than the metal. So all we cannot say. Okay, so, so, so basically okay. like lesser reactive metal. Yes, yes, correct. Okay. So, so it's, it's a choice, no? See, these are the process we are doing in the industry. So it's a choice, whatever metal we have, accordingly we'll choose the uh, reagent to react and gives the desired result. Okay. Yes. Sir. So, um, yes. So metal sulfide in this auto or self reduction, we don't require any external agent. So the reaction is, you see, 2HGS when heated in presence of air. So we have 3O2, it gives HGO and SO2 first, sulfur dioxide and oxide, which further reacts with HGS, then it converts into metal and, sorry, converts into metal plus We'll get SO2. SO2. Okay. So some part of it converts into oxide, which then again reacts with the sulfide itself and converts into metal. 
Same thing goes with copper also. You see this reaction, Cu2S, 2Cu2S reacts with 3O2, converts into 2Cu2O, 2Cu2O plus 2SO2. We get this, okay? Then this again copper oxide that you have over here, oxides of copper, it combines with the sulfide which is left and converts into 4 into 2, 6. 6 Cu plus SO2, sulfur dioxide. Correct? This kind of reaction is there. Okay, the next one we have, that is electrolytic reduction method. Electrolytic reduction method among all is more important. Okay, in this I'll tell you what <clears throat> you need to understand. Electrolytic reduction method that we call it as Write down electrolytic reduction method for the reduction process. This process we also call it as electro refining process. We use the we use the concept or the method of electrolysis in this purpose. So write down the third type of reduction process that we use is electrolytic reduction. Electrolytic reduction. And we also call it as electro refining process. Electro refining process. Write down this method is used for the purification of this method is used for the purification of copper, zinc, tin, silver, gold, nickel, lead, aluminium, copper, zinc, tin, silver, gold, nickel, lead, and aluminum for all this. Okay, <clears throat> so this one you have to memorize, the one that I'm giving you now, cathode. Obviously we have electrolytic process. You should know what is cathode and what is anode here. Cathode here is made up of pure metal, the metal which is used to be, which is there to refine. Okay, the metal which we need to extract. For the same metal, we have the cathode electrode. Okay, we'll have the cathode electrode of the same metal. In which one you're talking about? This one, uh, electrolytic reduction. Venga. Yes, sir. electrolytic only. It, it depends here. See, it depends here. If you need to extract metal, because we have condition, you will understand. Give me some time. Let me explain this. You will understand what we should use over here. Sure, sir. Sure. So cathode, what I'm telling you, cathode is made up of, we'll have a thin strip of it. 
made up of made up of pure metal pure metal what metal same as that to be refined okay suppose copper you need to extract then copper ka thin strip you have okay same as that to be refined okay and we'll have a thin strip of it thin strip cathode on this they ask question this information now if you look at anode anode is <clears throat> made up of made up of impure metal same metal which is to be refined same impure metal made up of impure metal but we have large slab of it thick and large slab of it so this one is thin this one is large slab of the same metal which is to be refined okay electrolyte that we use in this purpose in this process obviously we have the electrolyte of same metal which is to be refined okay electrolyte aqueous solution of aqueous solution of suitable salt of same metal which is to be refined okay now you see with this diagram you will understand so it's not like venkat we need very pure or very active metals it depends upon what metal is to be refined based on that we'll select the cathode and anode oh, okay sir okay okay so we have this uh, suppose the um vessel we have container in which the electrolysis is taking place so anode will have on the left hand side or the right hand side anode on the left or on the right anode will have on the left correct anode oxidation oxidation on the left so we'll have a large thick slab for anode but for cathode we have relatively thin thin strip of cathode obviously whatever is required for reduction for you know for electrolysis that will definitely do okay these things will be there and here we have the uh, solution the electrolyte aqueous solution of the same metal suppose metal m you need to refine so m ka solution you need to take here the same concept of half cell so we have all this theek okay? hai now this is cathode and it is pure right cathode pure metal this information you must remember okay this one is anode it is impure metal so impure metal means what we need to extract metal from this only because there are the impurity we have so if you can extract metal from anode right that is what we want this is the pure only so we have some impurities present over here right cathode pe we have only one reaction possible the reaction of cathode is what suppose the metal m we have so m n plus plus n electron reduction gives you m solid so no doubt about whatever m ion we have over here it goes here get you know m plus from the electrolyte will go here n plus mn plus will go here get reduced and deposit on the cathode so we wanted to take this m plus from the solution that's what the purpose we need to extract correct what we also wanted we also want here to take the metal from this impure slab 
if this m plus comes here into the solution right and the same thing will get reduced over here so we are extracting metal ion from this impure electrode and that is getting deposited on this and that is how the purification is done are you getting my point correct so could you repeat my internet got disconnected i i said what you need to impure we need to extract metal from this impure slab that you have no anode correct so yes sir. in order to extract metal from this suppose if here the oxidation of metal takes place m converts into mn plus it comes out into the solution and the same metal ion gets reduced at cathode so eventually what happens we extract mn plus from this slab and then this only will get reduced at cathode and get deposited over here so that is how the you know re refining process is taking place correct so at anode we basically have two types of reaction possible anode we have two types of reaction possible one is the reaction that we want to happen which is nothing but m metal converts into m n plus plus n electron this is the oxidation of metal atom which is there in this impure electrode but here we have some negative ion also right that is x suppose n minus this also wants to get oxidized like this this reaction we want to happen this reaction we do not want so it is a unwanted reaction we have we want this to happen so that we can extract metal from this slab right so what is required here logically you can understand see whatever is there to mug up that you need to memorize but this you can understand logically we want this to happen we want we want this not to happen right this reaction we do not want so we'll choose the electrolyte in such a way that the anionic part of the electrolyte that you have is ka reduction potential should be should be more than to that of metal or if you talk about in terms of oxidation potential the oxidation potential of metal should be more than to that of the anionic part of the electrolyte because if this oxidation potential is more it will get oxidized first related to this right in comparison to this correct so we'll choose the electrolyte in such a way that the oxidation potential of metal is more than to that of the anionic part that we have are you getting it so we'll choose the anionic part in such a way that this reaction does not take place only this will be there and this is only possible when the oxidation potential of metal is more than to this okay so this note you write down the anionic part of the electrolyte the anionic part of the electrolyte is to be is to be chosen in such a way in such a way that reaction 2 this is the first and the second reaction first and second reaction the anionic part of the electrolyte is to be chosen in such a way that anodic reaction 2 does not take place such a way that in such a way that anodic reaction 2 maine wahan pe likh diya numbering 1 and 2 anodic reaction 2 does not take place thank you sir okay one last point in this write down the metallic impurities having lower oxidation potential this one lower oxidation potential the metallic impurities having lower oxidation potential having lower oxidation potential then the metal
then the metal gets separate in the form of anode mud gets separate in the form of anode mud i'm repeating metallic impurities having lower oxidation potential than the metal gets separate in the form of anode mud mud simply we say or anode mud we call it as because it is coming from anode so anode mud we represent like this we'll have some impurity that accumulates over here so this is the anode mud understood so this is it this is the process of refining now after this we have to discuss allingham diagram and then some purification process of this thing a uh, purification process of some metals like aluminium zinc copper will discuss one two will discuss and that is it in this chapter we have right so we'll take a break now after the break we'll start allingham diagram okay so we'll resume at 655 take a break